wasn't and I was in a similar boat. I believed in my head. I, I heard the gospel many times, and I believed it, you know, in my head. I just it, it never transferred it to my heart until April eleventh, two thousand eleven. And so, you know, typically, what we find in in this day and age in Christianity, and again, you've been in ministry a lot longer than I have, and I'm sure you could say that you've been dealing with this the whole time. You've been in ministry, and that is that you have you have ditches on both sides of the road, right? You have you have a lot of people that are probably listening to this. And they've heard a watered down version of the gospel. And what I mean by that is they, they heard simply, oh yeah, John three sixteen, if you just believe and and they and they're trusting, well, I heard that at the church and I might have even quote unquote said a prayer, which I'm trusting you know, some people could actually trust in the prayer, like trusting in a baptism. It's it's a work. You're trusting in the, your prayer, not the Lord Jesus Christ. And so there's people that are, are way over in the ditch on one end and, and, and they're and they're wrong and they're they're lost. And then you have people way on the other end that talk about, well, you must repent to be born again. And that scripturally that is true, but when they preach it, they're preaching that you need to, to, to turn away from all your sins. And, and, and in so doing then, a work of repentance, of, of I'm not sinning, then in so doing, having to continue to work and to quote-unquote, as they say, live a sinless, perfect life, which anyone yeah, that's honest... people have, have misrepresented the word repent. And, and they make it sound as if when you repent, you stop sinning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I don't know of anyone that stops sinning, even after salvation. I, I don't know of anyone. I tried it. I couldn't even make it out of my house in the morning. I thought, well, now that I'm saved, I shouldn't sin. And I truly <laughs> tried. I, I'm with you. I did the same thing, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, as an 18-year-old, uh, sincerely and genuinely trying to please the Lord and say, well, I... So now that I'm saved, you know, I don't want to sin. Mm-hmm. Where before, it didn't bother me, right? And, and, and we would say the same thing now. We try our best not to of sin. Of course, of course. But we understand that as long as we have this flesh, the world of flesh and the devil, you know, our internal enemy, our external enemy, and our infernal enemy, as long as we have those, we're going to sin. I mean, it's, it's just going to happen. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm going to try to sin. I'm going to avoid, or try to avoid sinning. But repent doesn't mean stop sinning. Yes. Repent means to turn the other direction, to change your mind. Because before I was saved, you know, sin to me, I, I kind of thought, well, this is probably isn't right, I probably shouldn't do this, but I didn't understand why. Mm-hmm. I didn't know the reason behind it. Uh, it was just it was just that, that inner law of God that God placed in my heart, but I didn't totally understand that. Well, in 2 Corinthians 7.10 says, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, you know, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. And so we were sorry that we were going to get caught, right? We, we, were, we were worldly sorry, but, but, but when we get to the point where we realize that we're sinning, not, not against each other or other people, right, mm-hmm. because we could, we could justify that, but against the holy, perfect God who created us and died for us, you know, that's really truly acknowledging your sin. And really, the word repentance, you know, a definition of it would be regret or remorse. And, and when we get to that point, we remember who we're sinning against and acknowledging our sin, right? We're, in order to be found, you must first admit that you're lost and realizing that because of our sin, we are going to die and go to hell. No, no excuses, no way around it, and, and we're regretting that, we're remorsing that. And also, you mentioned the, the, the change of direction, which is 100% true, right? Yeah. And before you got saved, or me, or anybody else, we were trusting in something else. Right, we were either trusting in our good works, or we were trusting in maybe in Jesus plus good works, or, you know, things like that. Um, and so, the repenting or cha- changing direction is: Hey, I'm no longer believing that because I got sprinkled as a baby and I grew up in a in a in church and in a Catholic school that I'm going to die and go to heaven. I'm putting all my faith and all my trust in believing in Him and Him alone. And so, I'm I'm repenting of whatever I was trusting in to get me into heaven as well. You're changing your mind. You're changing yeah. your perspective and saying, oh, I see now mm. that the way I used to think, that's a dead end road. Yeah. That leads to, to hell, basically. Mm. That, that doesn't lead to heaven. Uh, and now I see that I'm literally sinning against God himself, not just, like you said, the other individual or myself, but I'm sinning against God. I change my perspective on sin. Yeah. I change my perspective on sinful behavior. And I repent and say, okay, now I know why this is wrong, and I need to try to do this instead of that. And I realize that the you know because of doing that wrong, I am going to die and go to hell. That's right. Not, well, my sin's not as bad as somebody else's, so I still deserve to go to heaven, right? And yeah, so that's... a lot of people, unfortunately, have this, and I know I did, 
growing up because I never went to church. Uh, I didn't read the Bible. I didn't know, I didn't know anything about God. Uh, other than the principles of scripture that are kind of sprinkled throughout society, you know, and, and I I didn't know that until after I got saved. I was like, yeah. oh, wow, I didn't even know that they were kind of sprinkling in biblical principles. But I, I remember before I was saved, I thought, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not horrible. You know, I don't, I, I've never killed people. I don't rob banks. You know, I don't do these horrendous things. Uh, I don't rape women. I don't, uh, you know, commit adultery, you know, these other types of things. But I said, but I'm, I'm not that. So God's going to, he's going to kind of grade me on a curve, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going to yeah. say, well, compared to other people, you know, you are okay. Yeah. And, and you come to find out that once you truly understand what sin is, you're not okay. Amen. You're not okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit more uh, later. Uh, but, but be, again, because you have the ditches on both sides of the road, well, that re that version of repentance is wrong. So we don't even talk about repentance. We just talk about a, a, a skin uh, thick belief. Yeah. And, and they're bo but they're both wrong. And we want to stay smack dab right in the middle of the road and avoid ditches on each side. And so we must re much we must preach repentance, but we yeah. must do it. Um, biblically, you know, Mark one fifteen says, and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand, repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent and believe the gospel. Luke chapter 24, verse 47, as the Lord is giving uh, the Great Commission, one of the five times recorded in Scripture he does so, uh, verse 47 says, and the repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name, among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And so we can't leave out repentance, but we must proper, properly define and understand it to really truly do it, right? Amen. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not stopping sin. You're never going to stop sinning. Yeah. Um, but it is changing your mind and saying, I agree with God. He's mm -hmm. right. <coughs> Excuse me. He's right. I'm wrong. And I need to try to get in line with it. That's good, yeah. And so and so you mentioned earlier uh, the, the fact of, and again, this is, this is something that, that's very left out, right? And, and we must get the order correct, and we must also get um, the fact that we do both of these aspects. And that the, that's the, the belief, you know, you're, you're repenting uh, to, to then believe, right? And you're, you're acknowledging, you're repenting, and then you're believing. But then you also must receive. And so some people, you know, received Christ, or so they thought by saying a prayer, quote-unquote, uh, but they, they, they didn't really truly believe. They didn't truly understand it. And some, some may truly, you know, have the grasp of it, but they haven't personally asked him to be Savior, and they haven't received him. And if I'm going to give you a gift, right, you know, let's say I bought you a new car, right, and I, and I put the title in your name, and it's for you, and it's sitting in your driveway, and it's just sitting there for you, and it's in your name. I bought it. It's for you. It's sitting there. Uh, but you still have to physically receive it. You have to walk out, and you have to accept the title, accept the keys, to make it your own. Other than that, it's just sitting there, you know. And you haven't, you haven't, you know, you know, cashed that in. And so um, the verses that you mentioned earlier, I'll read real quick, and then I'll ask you to comment on. And that's John chapter one, verse twelve and thirteen. Uh, these follow two of the saddest verses in the Bible. We're talking about where he came unto his own, his own received him not. You know, they rejected him, and many, many today reject him. I previously to being saved rejected him many times, and it says. But as many as received him, to them he gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So they believe, they receive, and then God does the saving uh, and makes us, and then they become sons of God. And verse 13 really helps us, I think, understand this. It says, which were born, being born again, right? Mm -hmm. Not of blood. You're not born into it. So just because we are, we are pastors doesn't mean that our children are automatically going to go to heaven. They must That's be born right. again also. God uh, has no grandchildren. Yeah, yeah. Pastor Mick says that all the time, and I absolutely love it. It's so, it's so true, though, right? So it's not of blood, nor is it of the will of the flesh. You can't earn it, right? For by grace are you saved through faith. It is the That's gift right. of God, not of works, right? And so, so we must understand that. It's not of works. And, 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 and saying a prayer and being uh, you know, sprinkled or even, be, even being baptized by immersion without yeah. salvation is not, that's, that's right. a work that you're trusting right. in other than Jesus. And it goes on to say, uh, nor of the will of man. It's not by desire. None of us could desire anybody to be saved. I hope that my prayer is that each and every person listening would put their faith and trust in Christ. But my desiring it to happen is not going to do it. They must, on their own, you know, receive, you know, repent, believe, and then receive. And then it says, nor of the will of man, but of God. It's God's yeah. work. I'm glad you, I'm glad, I, I love these verses, um, yeah. particularly verse 12. Because, Amen. 
uh, it talks about believing, <coughs> excuse me, and receiving. And uh, I remember years ago hearing my pastor in Baltimore, he preached on this verse, and he used several examples, and I thought, man, they're very poignant. And they've stuck with me ever since, and I've used them many times over. Uh, and he mentioned the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ is called in Scripture uh, the bread of life. He says, I am the bread of life. And he said, listen, if, if I had bread here and I made a sandwich, right, with that bread, you know, peanut butter and jelly, ham and cheese, whatever, whatever kind of sandwich, and I placed it before you, it's a bread, it's a, it's a sandwich. It's made of bread. There's bread there. You believe that that's bread. But until you actually eat it, until you consume it, that bread does you absolutely no good. You can believe that it's bread all day long. <laughs> yeah. But until you actually consume it, the nutrients do you no good. They don't help your body. Same thing he's called, you know, the water of life. I have a glass of water. Uh, I can believe it's H2O. I can believe that, you know, it'll quench my thirst. I can believe that, that it'll help me be physically healthy and all those, you know, benefits of drinking water. But until I actually drink it, you know, I, I can't drink it. You know, I, I don't receive the benefits. Uh, the same thing with the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I am the door. I am the door. I can believe there's a door in front of me. I can believe that the door will lead me to another room. I can believe the door will lead me to whatever. I can believe in the hinges, the, the frame, the door. I can believe everything about the door. But until I actually walk through the door, it does me no good. And so we must believe, but we must also receive. And that, when we receive, is when we say, okay, I, I'm transferring the knowledge from my head to my heart, and I'm not only going to acknowledge that it's true, the facts about the Lord Jesus Christ, but I'm going to put my faith in those facts. That's good. I'm going to receive it. I'm going to consume it. I'm going to make it mine. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what you're talking about with the gift. You, know, you have to make it your own. You have to receive it. You have to take it. Because God has done everything to provide it, but he's not going to force you to take it. That's good, yeah. Well, and, and and so you know, I think a lot of times people people say they believe, but they don't really know what they're believing in. They don't really scripturally know. You know, uh, Hebrews eleven verse six says, "But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he is who he said he is, right? That he is God, mm -hmm. and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him." And we know that that faith is the substance of things hoped for. Verse one tells us, and the evidence of things not seen. And so we're going to now define the gospel. You know, the gospel, the, the, the word gospel means the good news. You know, the good news is, you know, the bad news is that because every single human being is a sinner, they're going to die and go to hell, and they're condemned already. But the good news is, the good news of the gospel is that because if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and as we go and ex explain exactly here, what it is that we're believing in, and if you haven't believed this way, scripturally, then you're not born again. You're believed in something else, a, a different Jesus, so to say. And so, so Romans chapter 1, verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, it, for it is the power, or the explosion, the, the, the ignition that makes it happen, of God unto salvation, to everyone that believeth, but properly believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Again, many times in Scripture we see the word believe, and, and what that, it, it is in saying that in order to truly believe, then, then, then the repentance part has already happened, and then you're then receiving. And that's, that, that's it. You have, you have repented of the way you used to think, and now you have accepted the truth of God, and said, okay, my way was wrong, his way is right. Amen. I'm believing in that. Yeah. That it's, it's a one, uh, it's two transactions in one. You're, you're repenting from your thoughts and your uh, ideas of what heaven will be like or how to get to heaven, rather, and saying, okay, God's way is right, my way is wrong, I'm believing God's way. That's right. Yeah, and, and Romans chapter 10, verse 17 tells us, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So again, there may be many people, and I, and I was in this camp because I got saved by myself at home, that I kind of teetered for a little bit because I didn't have the verses right in front of me. And so we need to be born again in faith by the word of God. Now, I had heard it, so I was truly born again, but I kind of I kind of teetered, I kind of doubted. And when you're in that situation, you're not really doing much for the Lord because you're worried about your own soul. And of course, the Lord wants us to get past that. And so basically, what is what is the, 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 the gospel in a nutshell, right? The, the simplicity of it is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 
verse 3 and 4. And it says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which all I also received, which I love in that part. You know, Paul said, Hey, I didn't, I didn't make this up. Somebody shared it with me, and I'm sharing it with you. This is the gospel that God gave, and somebody shared it, and that's how it gets done. It gets shared from, from person to person, from faith to faith. The just shall live by faith. And so it says, uh, that which also I received, how that Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, right, uh, Jesus of, of Nazareth, died for our sins according to the scripture as it was prophesied, and he was buried. So he actually lived a, a sinless perfect life, 33 and a half sinless perfect years. He truly died on that cross. He wasn't, there was, there, there, there was no other explanation. He was, he was physically dead, and he was buried. He was actually buried. The body wasn't taken. It wasn't hidden. It was buried. Uh, and, and then and that rose again the third day, also according to the scriptures as it was prophesied. And so that is the gospel. And so if we're not believing that he either truly died or he was buried for three days, right, and spent three days in the, in the, in the belly of the earth, and that he truly physically rose again, then you're not believing the gospel of the Bible. You're not believing in the Jesus of the Bible if he's just a good man or a preacher or a prophet. Right. Uh, right? It, it's, it, these are the things that we need to, to believe. This, this is the scriptures uh, and the gospel according to the scriptures. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23 says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, right? Ourselves were corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. The perfect, unchanging word of God. First Peter chapter 1, verse 25 says, But the word of God endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. And so, you know, again, a lot of people, I think, come to that point where they don't truly understand the gospel. Yeah, no, the, the, to me, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 are so clear. I mean, it, there's verses in, in the Bible that, you know, sometimes they're a little tougher to understand than others. Uh, there are some hidden truths in verse. This this can't be any clearer. That's this, right. I mean, this is as clear as the nose on our face. The Lord himself, through the Apostle Paul, said, uh, I deliver unto you, first of all, I have to receive how that Christ died for our sins, according to Scripture. He was buried and he rose. That's it. it he, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. That is the gospel. Uh, that is the good news. The fact that you or me, or us, as, as uh, human beings, we don't have to die and be buried and rise again and conquer death, hell, and the grave. We, we don't have to do that. We can't do that. He did for us what we cannot do Amen. Uh, for ourselves. He did for us what, if we would have lived a thousand lifetimes, we wouldn't have been able to do for ourselves. And so the fact that now I don't have to die and spend eternity separated from God in the lake of fire, that's good news. Amen. That, that's exciting news. That, that to me... Uh, when I first heard that, I really couldn't believe that God would be willing to do that for me because I felt as though I was so insignificant, I was so unimportant. I thought, well, who am I? I'm no one. I'm just an 18-year-old you know, young guy that just does whatever he wants to do when he wants to do it. I have no, no heart for God, so to speak. But it was, very, it was made very clear to me that God loved me. He loves me personally. He loves me yeah. individually. And he sent his son to do exactly that for just little old me. Yeah. And wow, how, how, uh, what love is that? I mean, how much greater love can there possibly be? There is no no greater love than that. That's right. Yeah, and, 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 you, and you make a good point. So it's, you know, he, you're believing in who he is, right? Because yes. it, 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 he, he has to be who he said he was. He was the Christ, right? The, the Messiah, the chosen one, the savior of the world, as was prophesied. Right. You know, but he's also, he wasn't just the son of God. He is God in the flesh. You know, right. uh, Isaiah 9, 6 talks about him being the prince of peace, but also the everlasting father, the almighty God. And, and Jesus is who he said he was, and then that he also didn't turn and, and did the things that he said he was going to do, and actually did that.